Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Aquarium of the Pacific's Online Academy. We are so excited this morning to be joining you. My name is Alicia. I'm part of our education department. Now, we're going to be going on a little adventure today to do some exploring. Now, before we get started, I would love your participation, and you can participate in a couple different ways. If you have questions or you want to share your thoughts, comments, fun facts, you can text us. Um, so I'm not alone here in our studio. I have my friend Allie and Aaron who are helping us out today. So Allie is controlling all of the wonderful images that we have behind us right now. We're looking at our live webcam for our Blue Cavern exhibit. And she's just put up our live text question. So if you have questions during our program, or again, if you have any comments, um, you make any observations, you want to share those, feel free to text those in. If you're watching our program and um, after we've gone live and you want to email in, we have an email address. Uh, so we welcome any of those conversations as well. Now, I understand that not everyone can text in and that's okay. You can also write down your observations. You can say them out loud. You can share them with a family member, a friend later, however you would like to participate. We welcome that today. Okay, so we're going to be exploring today. Now, the topic that we're exploring is, has to do with the word adaptation. Have you heard of that word before? Hmm. So this word basically means anything special, like something on the outside or inside that an animal has, or even something that an animal does or its behavior that helps them survive in their home, also known as their habitat. So often when we talk about these special features on an animal or a behavior, it has something to do with where they live. So very closely, we are tying that word adaptation with habitat. And so as we explore a couple different animals today to really define some examples of adaptations, we're often going to be talking about the habitat, or again, where that animal lives as part of that story. So we're going to take a cruise. Now I'd love to, you know, adaptation can be how an animal finds their food, how they hide from predators, how they find a mate, um, you know, even sometimes how they sleep. So things that help them in their everyday lives for surviving. Now, we're gonna focus a little bit more on how animals find their food today. That's what um, I think we're going to focus a little bit more on. But if you have questions, comments, things that you would like to explore, feel free to text those in. So, you know, the first animal that I wanted to explore with you that has something called an ambush predator strategy. What does that mean? Well, this animal is actually a bit smaller than the animals that we have in this habitat. And you can probably fit them in your hand. The smallest is the size of a grain of rice and the biggest is about this big. Um, they live in sometimes cooler waters like this um, but most often you find them in warm tropical waters. So I wanted to introduce you to this animal here as our starting animal. What animal is this? Yeah, it's a seahorse. How did you know it was a seahorse and not like, you know, a turtle? Is there anything special on its body? Hmm, yeah. Well, I see a couple of things that are pretty special. Now, when we're trying to investigate when we make our observations, when we're looking closely and trying to learn about an animal, you know, looking for those details really helps give us clues about how they might move. That's another way, uh, another adaptation an animal has is how they move or even how they stick onto something, um, how they eat, how they protect themselves. So looking at our seahorse here, do you notice anything special that might help it in any of those categories? Hmm. Well, I notice a little fin back here that might help it move. Seahorses are definitely known for that really curly tail that they have. And that curly tail helps them hold on. Now I will tell you that even though they have a fin here to help them swim, and they have another one right here on the back of their head that's pretty clear, it's hard to see, but it kind of waves around like this, um, they're not the best swimmers. Their strategy to survive is to use this prehensile tail, this curly tail, which is one of their adaptations. 
something special they have to wrap around something just like this. Thank you, Miss Allie. So you see this nice wrapping. They don't have arms like this, so they have this tail. And then they kind of just hang out. Now, what do they eat? What is, it, what is something that they could kind of maybe wait for or maybe very, very slowly go after? Hmm. Have you heard of the term plankton before? Well, plankton, we're going to bring this term up a, in a few different ways today. Plankton is just a term, a science term, for a drifting plant or animal. So they love to eat little tiny animals that are just drifting in their home, their habitat. How could they catch those little tiny animals? Do you notice anything on their body, an adaptation that might help them? Hmm. Yeah, are you looking at their mouths? So this is a characteristic of the, of the whole group of seahorses, their cousins sea dragons and pipefish. They have this really long kind of straw-like mouth. And at the very end, they have like this little opening boop, boop, that they can suck in their prey. So they're adorable, they're cute, they're tiny, but they are predators because they are catching their food. And they use their colors often to blend in. Do you remember what that is called when an animal can blend in to their habitat, their home? Yeah, camouflage. So we're learning all kinds of good science terms today, right? So we're, we're practicing adaptation, camouflage, and our habitat today. So using some of these colors can help them blend in and they use that curly tail to hold on. So they have the ingredients to really help them hide in their habitat. And then as that little plankton drifts by, they can lean forward and doop, they can suck up those <laughs> prey. So here's another little seahorse right here. You can see sometimes they have these adorable little bellies. And this one's kind of just drifting. You can kind of see them moving around. It's not as graceful as um, some of the other animals that we're going to investigate. Oh, did you see that little boop? Yeah, that is the seahorse eating. I'm not even seeing the food. There's a little, there's a couple food particles here, but it's so tiny that we're not quite seeing it. So we're seeing that kind of ambush predator. We're seeing a predator that's kind of sometimes hiding and waiting for food to pass and sometimes kind of very slowly. Good thing the plankton can't move very fast. <laughs> it's just drifting around, kind of jump out and grab it. The other, maybe we'll go back to one of our other seahorse photos here. Um, the other thing that they have to help them, to help protect them is they have, instead of scales like other fish, they have these little plates in their skin, which give them kind of that rigid or hard look to their body. So even though this is a fish, not all fish have scales. Many fish do, and that's a form of protection. They instead have these plate-like um, pieces on their body that fit together with like a little bit of a skin over the top of them. So those are all different kinds of adaptations that help this one animal. And that's just looking at the outside of their body. You can imagine that they have tons of adaptations even on the inside of their body. Well, let's investigate a whole different kind of animal. So shape is another way that this seahorse is surviving, right? We talked about that curly tail. Um, but if we're looking at even shape of an animal, so we talked about colors, right, and movement, that's something else that we can pay attention to. We even talked a little bit about that with that straw-like mouth, right? What about an animal that is kind of shaped like a pancake? Yep, yep, there are pancake-shaped fish. And in science, we have a, a name for animals that are flattened this way. They're called depressed, to have a depressed body shape. Kind of like you've, you've um, released the air on something. <laughs> um, but don't worry, depress, depress is not like that they're unhappy. It's just the name for that pancake shape. So this animal, can you find it? This animal is using its shape to help it camouflage, to blend in. This animal also uses its ability to hide in its habitat, which happens to most often be kind of like a sandy bottom habitat, um, to wait for little fish to swim by and then 
kind of like a seahorse, it jets out and grabs its prey, its food. <gasps> Did you catch its eyes? Yeah. So this is called a flatfish. Now, a flatfish is a term for a, a, a huge group of fish that happen to be pancake shaped, mm -hmm, like this. And they're not all very closely related. They're, they're fish. Um, this one is, looks like a type of halibut. Can you see the outside of its body? It is blending in very well. So it has this kind of oval shape. There's the little tail, comes around. And what we're looking at right here is one eye and then the other and then a mouth. I know, two eyes are on the same side of its body. But it, it doesn't start out life this way. So it hatches from its adorable little fishy egg. Boop! It looks like a normal fish, one eye on either side. It's doing its little fishy thing. And then, believe it or not, in the first couple hours of its life, one eye will move to the other side of its head. And then it will lay oop, this way. It will lay flat with, with its eyes on this side. And that allows it to hide in a habitat that doesn't have a whole lot of rocks. So there's not a lot of rocks. Plus, you know, I wasn't expecting a fish to be in the sand. Were you? Yeah, it's kind of weird. So a little fish that is a, a prey might not either. I think we might have another picture that's a little easier to see of a flatfish. So this is a tropical type. This is um, a peacock halibut, I believe. And it has some amazing <laughs> circles on it as part of its coloration here. So this one is not blending in as well. It has some green on it, but that maybe it's just choosing not to blend in as well. So the eyes are actually right over here, it looks like, and then there's the mouth. Still hard to see. It can also be hiding so that it's not eaten by something even bigger. There are, there are bigger predators that if this animal shows itself or tries to move, it have to be careful. So it's using camouflage, shape, um, and even how it grows to help it as an adaptation in this habitat that's full of sand, which I think is pretty cool. What about another animal that is an, a master of camouflage that pretty much sits and waits for food to come by? Have you ever heard of a frogfish? Well, let me introduce you to this frogfish. It's pretty cool. Miss Allie's going to look for the picture for me. So this animal looks very closely like its habitat. It's our, I think our orange frogfish on our, she's going to pull something up for me here. Actually, they can be in many different colors, kind of like seahorses and sea dragons. They can actually change some of the, the shapes on their body as well. Okay, so I'm going to step out of the photo for just a moment, and I want you to see what you recognize from this photo. So the scuba diver who took this cool picture had to zoom in pretty close to the animal in order to see it. In this home, this habitat, normally you have these kind of big fluffy um, sponges that are orange too. And so this frogfish is blending in with it. Did you see anything fun? Oh my goodness, did you find the mouth? Yeah. So remember the seahorse has a special mouth, to, like a straw to suck in those special little animals? And, the, and we used shape earlier, and we're using color. Well, taking a look at the animal's mouth is also a clue for us. What do we notice about it? Is it small? No, it's kind of large. In fact, I'm sure that we're not even seeing the kind of corners of its mouth here. It's, it's like a, a big garage that opens. Rawr. There we go. <laughs> Here's another photo. You can kind of see the little teeth here as well. It, this, I love this photo too because even the outside of this frogfish's body looks like its home, its habitat, which is corals and some of these sponges. It looks kind of like a hard rock or coral on the outside. So again, looking at the outside of the body can be pretty cool. So here's that mouth. So if a little fish were like, oh, look, I'm going to go hide in the coral. Er, uh, it's going to be lunch because this frogfish is just waiting for it to get closer. So we saw the other picture that we were looking at. Did you see that little thing that was kind of hanging out? So just in case 
the animals aren't getting close enough, this frogfish has an, an extra special adaptation. It has a lure. It is like a fishing pole. And so this little thing is actually part of its body and it can, it can kind of wave it around like, oh, look, there happens to be this tiny little worm that needs to be eaten. And there's a fish that comes by and says, hey, I wonder what that is. So as they get close to have their meal, guess what happens? Yep, you know the end of that story. So they can swallow a, a pretty large fish actually in comparison of their body size. So it's, um, it is pretty incredible. So they're again, an ambush predator. This one has an extra special tool to make sure that those fish get pretty close to its mouth so it can leap. Now it has to get the, the animal close because did you notice that it has kind of those special fins to help it hold on? So there we go. Thank you, Miss Allie. I'm making Miss Allie go back and forth on her photos here. It has fins that are kind of like appendages like we have, right? They look like little arms and legs. <laughs> it kind of looks like it's dancing, to be honest, but it's really just holding on to its habitat as the waves are moving back and forth. So these fins, instead of doing a whole lot of swimming, which they can, but they're pretty clumsy, they're holding on. It, we can't see it here, but it's because it's laying flat. And then they just try to bring the prey to them instead of having to chase it. So those are some strategies that these ambush predators use to help them kind of bring the animals closer or to hide so that they can jump out. So we've talked about kind of these ambush predators, predators using camouflage, the shapes of their body, even that camouflage. What about animals that filter the water for their food? Have you ever thought about that? What could an animal what could an animal eat from the water? Well, we've kind of already talked about it, right? We said plankton, and there are other types of, you ready for this? Planktivores, which, you know, if we think about it, we think about our, our food webs out there, right? We have those carnivores who eat meat. We have the herbivores that eat the veggies and the plants and algae, and then we have the omnivores, right, that eat a little bit of both. So when we say planktivore, it really means that it's just a, a specialized type of food that it's eating. So it's eating specifically plankton. So can you think of an animal that might eat plankton besides our little, hmm, our little seahorses? Well, we talked about seahorses that are sometimes even this big. I'm going to introduce you to one of the biggest animals on the planet that can eat a whole whole lot of plankton. You ready? Ta-da! Were you thinking of the whale? Yeah, so whales, even though they're not tiny little, <laughs> tiny little seahorses and sea dragons, they eat a whole lot of things like plankton. They can also eat a little bit bigger food like small schooling fish as well, but they are filtering that from the water. And they do that using, um, some special adaptations that they have around their mouth and inside their mouth. So the plankton's floating around. So you have animals like uh, these, this humpback whale, blue whales, fin whales. They all have something inside of their mouth to help them take the plankton out and uh, from the water and not swallow too much water. So when they see their food, they, which is kind of drifting around, they can open their mouths really wide, and inside they have these really big, hairy-like plates called baleen that hang down. I'm going to show you a piece of baleen to show you what it looks like. This is a, a baleen piece from, uh, maybe we can turn our studio lights on, Miss Allie. Um, so it has this kind of hairy on one side. It's made of the same stuff as actually our hair and our fingernails, so it keeps growing in their mouth. And so on the inside here, they have this nice um, kind of catch. It's a filter. And then on the other side allows the water to move past it. And so they will slurp up a whole bunch of water. And whales like our humpback whales our, and other baleen whales have an expandable kind of pouch-like throat that allows them to take in that extra water. And then they use their tongue 
to push that water with the food through the filter, and then they lick it up. It's pretty cool. So we have animals like our humpback whales. Um, they actually visit our Southern California coast. Isn't that cool? We had this animal in our backyard sometimes here in Southern California. And so this is one adaptation they have. Here is a little video. Thank you, Miss Allie. You can see, oh, I can tell this is a humpback whale because of those nice white side flippers called pectoral flippers moving through. They, they're kind of like the ballerinas of the ocean. They have really long flippers. <laughs> they often will jump out of the water compared to other whales. Oh, look, there is that tail thing called a fluke. Here we go. Excellent, yay. Awesome. Now the whales class is a fun class, so we could talk the entire class just about whales, right? Um, and we do have a class all about whales, so check that out on our Aquarium Online Academy. Um, so before I get so sidetracked about talking about whales, I will say that um, they're pretty amazing, but they are a type of filter feeder and that they were, they're grabbing their food from the water. Um, that doesn't mean they're, they're not active though. So they are, they're not just constantly moving their, their mouths through the water. They're pretty active in finding their food and grabbing it. In fact, humpback whales will sometimes take in a big, right? They have to hold their breath, take in a big gulp of air and through their little blowhole on the top, which is kind of like the nose on the top of their head, they will release a whole bunch of bubbles in a circle and the pod of whales, which is their group, will create what we call a bubble net, trapping their prey kind of tighter and tighter and tighter. And then they come up from the bottom and they grab it. Isn't that cool? I think that's awesome. Here is another type of whale just to show you. Um, oh, this is the humpback whale. Um, and they have that baleen. This is a great photo because you can see that baleen, how it, it hangs from the, um, the side here. So they just have it on that one side. The bottom here, you can kind of see those lines those lines, those ventral pleats, expand to allow them to take that in. So um, yeah, pretty amazing. Again, if you have any questions, um, we, we have just a little bit more time for our program. Please feel free to text those in at any time. Um, the other animal that I wanted to show you that also is a filter feeder, but in a very different way, is not a mammal like a whale. It's actually another type of fish. So we're going to take a look back at our fishes. Ta-da! Have you ever heard of a whale shark before? Yeah, they're my favorite shark. Don't tell the other sharks, but they're my favorite shark. Um, one, they're the biggest fish in the ocean. They're pretty awesome. They have been recorded, the largest one, at 65 feet long. That is longer than a school bus. And the crazy part, just like whales, is that there are planktivores that eat a lot of plankton in the water, those small drifting animals. Um, just like our humpback whale, they can sometimes eat little, little tiny fish that get caught in their mouth, but mostly they're plankton eating. And I really do love that they're kind of polka dotted, which I think is really fun. We're also looking at two fish that are hitching a ride called remoras. They have a suction cup on their forehead and they stick to large animals like whales and um, sharks and turtles. And they're also filter feeders, but this way they don't have to put the energy into swimming. So our buddy here has a couple friends that are kind of hitching a ride, I guess. Never lonely, never lonely for Mrs. Whale Shark here. Now, let's take a look at the, the mouth, right? So when we're talking about filter feeding, um, we said that the, the humpback whale can open its mouth pretty wide to take in that water and filter it through, right? Using baleen. Well, what does the whale shark use? Well, can you see any, any teeth in here? Yeah, the whale shark's mouth um, is pretty wide, and I have an example that I'm gonna show you in just a moment. The teeth on the whale shark are very tiny. They, they actually don't even use their teeth anymore, so they open their mouth up very wide. The water goes through their body, uh, through their mouth, and out through their gills. We didn't talk about that for our other fish. But 
a characteristic of being a fish is having gills, right? They have to have a way to breathe in their environment. So their gills, which they have five of on the side here, are big. And on the inside, not only are they breathing, but they have these little extensions that come down and allow them to filter their food. It's crazy. It's kind of like, can you imagine taking a deep breath through your nose and catching your food in your nose? I don't know. It makes me think sometimes. Good thing there. Yeah, yeah. Allie's saying that's pretty gross. Yeah, we probably don't want to eat that. Luckily for the whale shark, they're built very different. <laughs> Let me show you what that mouth looks like. I had to step off screen because it's big. Ready? Ta-da! Now, not all whale sharks get 65 feet long. Many of them are, when they're full grown, are around like 30 or 40 feet long. That's still pretty incredible. And you can see that they'll open their jaw. So this is their, their jaw. If you think about your jaw, right? You can go ahead and touch your jaw around your mouth. It's hard. It's made of bone. Their skeleton and their jaw is made of something a little bit different. So sharks and their friends, the rays, they actually have nice flexible skeletons made of cartilage, which is another adaptation for this group of special fish like sharks and rays. Have you heard of cartilage before? Ah, yeah, if you're thinking about wiggling your nose, it's supporting our nose. We're talking a lot about noses today. And then our ears, right? Boop, boop, you can kind of bend your ear. You wouldn't be able to do that with the middle part of your arm here, right? We have a, a nice rigid skeleton on the inside. Um, but there is a little tiny bit more flexibility within the skeleton of the, the shark, which I think is really awesome. Okay, so we talked a little bit about filter feeders. We have just a few more minutes. Again, if you have any questions, we'll go ahead and put that number up for you. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about some of those more active predators, those predators that are really seeking out their food to, um, to be able to munch and see if we notice any differences on those. One of those animals I wanted to tell you about is actually a sea turtle. Yeah. Hmm. Now, not all sea turtles eat the same things. <laughs> That's okay, maybe we'll put up the other food. There we go. So some sea turtles love to eat things like seagrass and algae. Some sea turtles eat things like um, sponges pretty cool like the hawksbill turtle and some turtles eat really soft stingy things can you guess what that might be yeah jellies so there are some sea turtles that love to eat sea jellies um, so even green sea turtles so this is a green sea turtle here this green sea turtle and when it's first hatched out of its little egg and it's exploring the ocean it actually is an omnivore do you remember that one that word means yeah, a little bit of veggies and a little bit of meat. So this omnivore is not only eating the seagrass, it's also eating things like little snails and crabs that it might find in the seagrass as well. Its mouth, what do you notice about it? Yeah, its mouth is a little bit more in front of its body. And so you'll find that for our, our animals that are kind of actively going for their food. You can see the sea turtle. Thank you, Miss Allie. So it has that nice beak on the front of its body to take um, chomps of the seagrass, which it loves to eat, and algae. And now if it were to also find little invertebrates when it was young, so those little things like crabs and snails and clam, uh, maybe not clams, but shrimp, definitely those little shrimp pieces here, it would grab those. You can kind of see the ridges on the side of its, um, on its beak. So looking for those animals that have mouth in front will give you a little bit of a clue of kind of where they're finding their food. They're a little bit more active as they're eating and foraging. So that's a, another word for you, foraging. They're actively seeking out their food. Um, there is also, for example, if we look at sharks, there are some sharks, like maybe the great white shark, that's a shark that we think of a lot, um, that has a mouth right in front, so it's facing forward. So when we think about fish and some of these other animals, that forward-facing mouth is a little bit more active. Even our whale shark, even though it was a planktivore and it's feeding, it was, its mouth was facing a little bit more forward, so it's kind of actively filtering through water. 
And same thing with our shark here. Its food is going to be in front because it's a little bit more active to chase it. Where if we were to compare it to maybe our zebra shark, it's also foraging, but its food is going to be at the bottom. So looking for where an animal's mouth is will give us a hint if the food is going to be kind of in front, if it's chasing its food, or if it's finding the food at the bottom. All right, maybe we'll end by taking a, one last peek at one of our, our webcams here um, at the aquarium. So we've, we've talked about the word adaptation, I hope, by just exploring a few animals with you, talking about um, feeding strategies. I mean, there's so much to talk about when we talk about how animals get their food, right? We have um, many animals that live in one habitat, even exploring our webcams. You can explore our webcams on our website. Oh, there's the barracuda. Very cool. So um, even the, like our blue cavern exhibit, looking at the animals here, looking at the shape of their bodies, where their mouths are, how big their mouths are, will all give you clues to what that animal might eat. Thank you for exploring with us today, everyone. We have lots of programs today. I hope you'll stick around. Take care. <laughs>